evolution of black psychology that began as a black psychology. Now, black psychology, I think of as having begun in reaction to what we had learned about identifying who we were. And when I say what we had learned as captives within a Euro-American, a European frame of reference, a European definition of what was reality, what was real, and what it meant to be human. And so our introduction to psychology then was reacting to that. So we had to kind of deconstruct that. And that deconstruction says, OK, we must no longer see ourselves as we were defined by this other perspective, which is not our own perspective. And therefore, we need to identify it as a perspective that, in fact, identifies who we are. And so at the level of a kind of political confrontation, it became kind of black psychology. So it became a kind of a liberation tool. How do we kind of free the captives from this alien perspective of defining themselves? Black psychology, it's a spectrum. On one side of the spectrum is Africa. And then a writer has to decide how deep he wants to go into the foundation of Africa to understand these brothers in Oakland today. And some go all the way back to ancient Egypt, and some pick it up more when we come here to the States. But it's all part of one model, I'd say, that has different variations. My black psychology also has um, a cultural component because it's only from the cultural grounding of what I call the wisdom tradition of African deep thought that that conception of black makes sense. So African psychology would be inclusive of black psychology based on my definition, but African psychology, I think in most people's mind's eye, again speaks to a particular cultural orientation of which my definition could be a part. Black psychology with Ed Bain generally refers to psychology related to the African-American experience in some camps of the, the black psychology community. Uh, and African-American psychology, of course, you know, uh, would be used interchangeably with that usage of black psychology. And of course, African psychology, the way I use it, has a global uh, uh, scope you know, in terms of ethnicity and racial uh, application. The further you go back into the Africa. So, welcome back once again, Joseph Wood, Professor Carl Tone Jones, Patrick Irvin, Breakdown Friday, www.ontheshoulders1.com is the website. You can support me with the on Patreon, patreon.com backslash OTSOG. All my supportive links are in the bio. So, we're talking about black psychology today, and this is something I act, I literally have a degree in black psychology. I studied this at FAMU. The gentleman who was just talking before this gentleman uh, started talking, that's Dr. Kobe Cambon. This is his book. He is the first person I've ever learned anything about black psychology from. Real thick book, real. And I still got it's I still I need to read it again. It's been a while. But I've had, I've literally had this book since I was 18 years old. But um, talking about what is black psychology, and started off with Dr. Naeem Akbar. Um, if you've read Dr. Naeem Akbar's work, you are kind of familiar with the scope that he would come from, especially from a liberation standpoint of um, recreating the black mind in the West or in, anywhere in the world, recreating the black mind that has been shaped initially by the European. So black psychology is something that was created to help combat and reconstruct black minds. Um, if we think about what psychology is from a, from a Western European standpoint, psychology is the study of human behavior. So if we're using that study of human behavior, black psychology will be the study of the behavior of black people or African people throughout the world. So I want to start there. Uh, go ahead. I, I'm going to throw it to PC first on this one. Um, what's your thoughts on black psychology and is, is black psychology needed? Well, we definitely need a different sort of uh, framework when you want to talk about just uh, the experiences of black people alone. 
black people if in um whether you want to talk about black people here or anywhere in the um, world you know black people have to deal with a type of colonialism that created uh set generational traumas that um that have not been rectified so we need to a uh, study needs to be done in order to identify the precursors to create that for black people um and then we have to look for i think we have to deal with the different um the diversities within the diaspora in terms of creating um, a methodology in terms of study in regards to what people may be going through, their issues, their behaviors, based on how colonialism affected them in the different regions of the world. So I think it's very necessary because to study black people through the lens of a European is a disservice and you won't get an accurate, you know, um, an accurate diagnosis. You won't get an accurate fixation, I mean, fix on what actually black people are dealing with. So. If you don't know what the problem is, you don't know what the cause. How do you know how to fix it? Right. You know what I'm saying. So, and we have cultural, you know, things that that we've done in the past to address issues psychologically speaking in our own communities. You know what I'm saying. Uh, so, see, I think the the need to actually create that is necessary, and I also think, you know, like <laughs> it's up to us to do it. So I'm gonna leave it at that for now. All right, Pat. What's um, your ideas and thoughts about black psychology and do black people in America, black people anywhere in the, anywhere in the world need a black psychology? Uh, black people in America definitely do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, um, because I think every group needs, you know, I guess we need a, a larger discourse happening for uh the description of human behavior in the larger diaspora um but we we do need specific people focused on specific groups and uh, black people need that black people in america need that more than ever um given our origin story and um all of the social programming that has thus affected us psychologically uh and undoing all of that is going to be the job of not just black psychologists, but black sociologists, black anthropologists, um, you know, and all of those other, you know, ology people that study human society. So, yeah. Uh, and anybody that says that we don't need black psychology specifically, yeah, goddamn man. idiot. <laughs> You're not paying attention. <laughs> you're not you really you're not paying attention to what's going on around us what has happened to black people i want to read this this is from uh the name of dr cambone's book is african black psychology in the african context and african-centered approach um it says our problem of worldwide of worldwide european supremacy domination over africans is essentially a psychological problem in nature and yet we as a race are virtually ignorant of this field of study and analysis this is largely the legacy of the cultural oppression of african people in america in africa and throughout the world thus the liberation of african people ultimately requires a psychological solution at its foundation i.e in the broader sense of of cultural restoration and even though Africans brought psychological paradigms into the world, it is most ironic that all of the peoples of the planet, Africans at the present time, seem to be the least psychologically knowledgeable and adept in, in the relation to this problem. Sounds familiar. Mm -hmm. Sounds familiar. And I haven't read this book since I was 18. Sounds familiar. Mm -hmm. We ain't just out here just making up stuff, huh? And you know what? Real quick. I don't know, even to that, right? Like, I know a lot of people don't like WB Du Bois, especially in the uh, the conscious community. But you know, we got to give him credit. He was one of the first people, one of the first people to come along and specifically study black behavior, black mentalities, black things. You know, and and that's something that we as black people need to pay attention to not the fact that he graduated from a PWI like we shouldn't give a fuck about that let white people celebrate that but he was somebody that came along um and and said no we need to focus a lot of these new techniques and methods and and things of that nature 
specifically on understanding black people and the problems that black people have in America. And a lot of his early work was based on the study of people right there in, in, in your hometown of Philadelphia. PC. Yeah, the so, Philadelphia Negro. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> and those are studies and experiments and stuff that we need to be reading up on and, and progressing. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, nah, it's funny you say that. Somebody went off on W.E.V., the boys in the comments. They left a long dissertation about him, and it was funny. But I am so get... tired yeah. of Negroes and their <laughs> dogmatic ways of looking at things instead of always wanting to be the, the film critic or something of that nature instead of identifying what we can learn from a person and history. It's right. just a waste of fucking time. Right, right, right. But let's go ahead and get back in it because we got plenty of time to chat, so... Let's do it. Come on now. Experience or the African ethos, the more you are trying to find a source of original strengths and values that did not emanate from the American experience. So while the American experience is long, it's rich, it has its strengths, but the original values and foundations of people of African descent who live in America came from Africa. In my work, I actually use this, this uh, I combine the terms black and African, or I link them. Uh, so I use African slash black psychology to, in, to indicate that I'm not only referring to the psychological experience of African Americans, uh, or the psychological experience of North Americans, but the psychological experience of diasporian Africans as well as continental Africans, understanding that there may be some contextual variation and even some philosophical variation because of the context, but at the core that the, you know, the worldview principles would be uh, uh, relatively the same, you know, across the geographic uh, and national, you know, and national uh, boundaries. As we move from kind of deconstructing that paradigm or deconstructing those assumptions to begin to reconstruct how it was we defined ourselves before our captivity. I think the way that we identified that reconstruction process was to call it African psychology. So, so I, I don't like to think of it as being antithetical. I simply see it as being the evolution. It's the older brother, the older sister. It's the old, a more matured perspective of what began as a kind of a reactive form that came to be a kind of a reconstructing of defining ourselves for ourselves from our own ontological perspective. To me, African psychology was about essentially a cultural war. And, and what I write about, in fact, in, in some of my latest work is that a cultural war is literally an ideological struggle where we are literally at war for the minds and hearts and the future of our people. And so the development of the discipline of African psychology really became a cultural war of ideology. It became a cultural war of self-determination. And were we as African psychologists determined to chart our own future rather than just following the footsteps of our colleagues in, in European American psychology. It was a cultural war of values and that were the values that are central to African psychology going to read the the footsteps that we followed as opposed to embracing someone else's cultural ideology in European and Western psychology. Hold up, Joe. Um, and it was also a, a Go ahead. Um cuz I so I just want to I just want to like make this distinction here, right? Go ahead. Cuz the so the 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 um Previous elder was talking about it's not antithetical. Uh -huh. And in fact, that is exactly what it's become in practicality. The practical the use of it. What the psychology has become today in 2023. Yeah, like there is a large gulf between 
the black conscious community, which is kind of the lens that everybody views most black people get all of their black history information and their black psychology through the, the lens of community. the black conscious community. Right. And that does not go hand in hand with a lot of what the black psychology scholars and things of that nature would say. And so there's a there's a there's a, a disconnect there, but there's also a disconnect in the fact that um black all forms of black study right uh have been in their infancy in my opinion for a little bit too long and what i mean by that is everybody's a generalist when you first start something everybody's mm -hmm. learning about everything mm -hmm. we've been learning about everything for the last 50 60 no damn near 100 years mm -hmm. um black people in america specifically but i'm sure all over the diaspora but in america specifically we need more specialists people that are not trying to gain all of the information about all of the people in every field but in understanding that we need more specialists that also means we need those specialists to understand their lane their place on the road and how to work together with other people. It's like me, right? I view myself as a black nat nationalist. But I don't view pan-Africanism as a, 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 a enemy of black nationalism. I view, right, it, as, I view it as a step. Pan-Africanism right. to me is a larger worldview. Black nationalism to me fits inside of that worldview. Well, you know, I'm, I'm always talking about different pieces of the puzzle. Right. And but listening to all listening to to all the uh, scholars talk, you know this is yeah I I know I know it's it's what I talk about and I know I incorporate the psychology into the history because that's how I learned it and you know I've I've, I've told people about my path. Here's one of the books you see one of my one of my professors is, uh, is on here so I I think the way I think for a reason. Like I, I know what I've learned, and um, but I, I get what you're saying though. Uh, in the beginning, when you talk about being and an, what's it antithetical? I'm, I'm I know I said the word wrong, but <laughs> whatever. But and so I kind of want to get back to that because you're you're talking about it. Basically, you're saying it kind of took a couple steps back as, over the years because I'm. I, I'm guessing this was recorded in the 90s. I'm guessing this is recorded. Yeah, in the yeah, 90s. yeah. Yeah. But we're in 2023 now. So we basically haven't furthered the information, what you're saying. Right. I'm saying we haven't furthered the information. And in not furthering the information, it has become what it was not originally intended to be. Uh, a, a, a crutch for us to not move further because we're stuck and like we've said plenty of times we're stuck in the basically ain't no nice way to say it but we're stuck in the intellectual masturbation stage mm -hmm. well because because he said uh and because uh, i know pc you're trying to jump in um no, <laughs> 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 because he said oh because they're all talking about uh how it was designed to be um, a way for black people to incorporate a different set of values and a different way of thinking and to move our culture in a different direction, right? Now, I think one of the shortcuts to that, or one of the shortcomings to that is that those values, directions, and ways of thinking that were supposed to be different were never defined. And you know, I'm big on definitions. That's my thing. But it's hard to move forward when you don't know what forward is. Um, so they were never defined. And over time, as the institutions that were supposed to house and develop these schools of thought became hey. more white-like in their own thinking and approach to, to, to educating kids, all of that was lost. Mm -hmm. And so now you have a collection of random facts and views yeah. and beliefs that are disconnected from the research and disconnected from the original intent of what the programs were supposed to be in the first place. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Well, I think it started off in in that place of discovery, like you said, Pat. Now, black psychology has been studied for um, over a hundred years. Mm-hmm. True. You know what true. I'm saying? You know, uh, if we go back to W.E.B. Du Bois, you also have to go back to Carter G. Woodson. You know, the study the idea of black behaviors, and um, and then as you move forward, Dr. Amos Wilson, Jawanza Kanjufu, Dr. Francis Crest Wilson. Um, there's been a, a slew of, of people who uh, who created this, but the one thing they failed to do was to create an institution in which they can actually have um, conferences to narrow down these meanings, to actually check one another in terms of where this was going. So they all spiraled out of control and they went into this whole pantheon, pantheon of, of rugged individualism in regards to all seeking to figure this thing out. And so what you have is a bunch of well-meaning brothers and sisters going into different directions. And you know what they say, the path to hell is let, is, is is paved with good intentions. Yeah. And so I think what we're seeing is a lot of them, they didn't necessarily build with one another or build off of different philosophies that was already researched by another another. Like we had with um Pax, you know what I'm saying? One of the uh one of our um codes of conduct, you know, mm. we talk about not 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 uh redoing the work. You know what I'm saying? Um I'm yeah, trying yeah. to think remember <laughs> I'm trying to remember which one that practical application though. Yeah, don't duplicate the work. Yeah. Don't duplicate yeah. the work, right. So, but we didn't do that. And so instead of building off of one study and building off of another study, like when you start talking about the white institutions, you, like you can name the white institutions that created the pathways to psychology. You can name them. You know, the Carnegie Mellon Institute, The everybody knows about the Rockefeller Institute. You know what I'm saying? Um, and and then you have all these major think tanks. We still have not gotten to that place where we see the need to generalize, to create a think tank or to create an institution where we have the conferences around building upon these theories until those theories are actually practical and they can actually be applied to black people. So yeah. that's my yeah, frustration we, with it all. Well, yeah. And the ball, the ball has never, it wasn't picked up. It wasn't picked up from the scholars. I think, I think the generation that came directly after those scholars, uh, it, it almost seems as if they were, <clears throat> you know, starstruck. And, yeah. and so that's, yes, we were Joseph. <laughs> well, well, no, I'm, I'm finna get to us, our generation. I don't think we're no, our generation. Like right after <laughs> I think we're the generation right after them, aren't no, we? No, because remember they they giving these lectures in the nineties. We children in the nineties. No, uh, but you know, but because it wouldn't be like, well, I guess I guess so. Because they would be, well, no, because they would be like the generation before our parents, wouldn't they? Yeah, it's two generations down. But even the generation, see, that was the absent generation of consciousness. If you want to be honest, my generation, the generation of our parents, of con- yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. I would fit in that category, unfortunately. But yeah, um, that generation. Well, well we <laughs> not wanna... our generation. We ain't doing that right now either. So, but but see, through social media, and the one thing I will say, social media made it where it was more visible, so more people are talking about it. Right. Um, whereas in the past, you know, I say the '90s and early 2000s, this wasn't the time. This wasn't the conversation. You know, um, I remember seeing Dr. Francis Cress Wilson being ridiculed in the, the attempts at humiliation on Phil Donahue shows mm-hmm. in the 90s. I remember seeing that. And then mm-hmm. I remember, like, skipping to, you know, the, the Cosby Kid generation where nobody ever paid attention to the people that made that generation possible. Right. And then we skipped right. off to about... 2009 2010 and now we're talking about 
the things that are relevant in black sociological and psychological issues. So yeah, we're, 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 the ball. We're, we're, we're explaining why we are here, but right. we there's the those scholars laid out the framework, but no real psychological examination of black people has been done. To really, especially if the because if the goal of black psychology is to is to rewire and reconstruct the black mind to to black liberation, to be able to create because we it, we had a specific show about that, like we had a specific show about that based off of your your documentary, a specific mm -hmm. show about re culture and restructuring the African uh, black people's minds, specifically in America, to a mind of liberation. So now we're going back and we, we're looking at these uh, black psychologists. I, I, I read a bit from the book. Black liberation is the goal. But if we're, once again, we're going to keep, we sound redundant. If we're not using the information, bro. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, once look at, look at the quality of your individual and collective lives. If you know this information, if you've been, if you call yourself conscious, you've been studying this information, but the quality of your life is not improving, then you're not really, Using the information. No, we're a bunch of DL Hoolies. <laughs> you know, we we like to say we read a book and this, that, and the other, but the application of it all, you know, what I mean, it's still theoretical. Dr. Claude well, Anderson yeah. said back in the in the early 70s when he was pushing for reparations. For one of the first things he said was we need to black people need to have um extensive therapy due to our experience in post-traumatic slave syndrome. He didn't necessarily use those words, but he said based on the fact that black people had generations of slavery and Jim Crow, we need to have our situation analyzed. And each black individual who lived in this country needed to have therapy that addresses the harms and traumas that were put upon us through white supremacy. You know? Yes. So... The notion is has been there for a long time, but it's just the, the fact that, um, man, listen, most black people don't want to be black. Most black people don't want any ties to being African, none of that other shit. And like I said before, if most Negroes could wash this black skin off of them and receive Damn. white privilege tomorrow, they'd be asking where and when and how much would it cost to buy that shit. You see what's going on with BBLs? Imagine if they could watch this black shit off of them. And that's their mind, because their mind is already white. Most black people are white supremacists. <laughs> so this is why the black psychiatrists and uh, psychologists are not even really considering this particular concept, because it goes against their pedagogy. It goes hey, against... Hey. Good. I just want to be clear. You mean like the psychiatrist that uh, that normal black people today are going to see for therapy and counseling? They they are not incorporating this black psychology information because they they are separated from it. Is what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, gotcha. gotcha. No I want I just want to make sure they have no cultural understanding of what it is to be black, and they gotcha. don't even see themselves as black. In fact, if you ask them, see him in Belgium, if you ask them to identify who they are they will start off with their degrees they will yep. start off with their titles and they may even go five to six things in in terms of their description before identifying who they are as a race who they are as a culture who they are as a people and i know this because i've done this with high school students and i've asked them these questions i'm a basketball player i'm a hairdresser uh you know, um, I, I make nails, I do pottery, all this other shit. But all the other students in the classrooms from different ethnicities and background, I'm Chinese, I'm half Mexican and half Cuban. You know, um, you know, they identify their race first. I'm Italian, but my mother's Irish, blah, blah, blah. They identify that first before they get into their names, titles, and all that other shit. We move away from that. Oh, and because man. psychologically, we identify being black and being African with losing, and nobody wants to be a part of a losing team. But that's what happens when you, when you were brought over to be a labor class, and you were conditioned to be a labor class. You're going to identify yourself by your occupation. Yeah. Mm. 
Pat. Pat, you was trying to get in there. <clears throat> um, I don't think I was, but I always got something to say. Go ahead, say it, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> now, I think one of the problems that we run into um, is that, like PC said, the rugged individualism. That becomes a problem when you're dealing with uh, psychology because in order to change psychology, psychology or culture, it requires a group. So a lot of the information people are walking around with is information that is essentially useless to you as an individual, uh, which is why people, you know, they start the intellectual masturbation sessions or the things like that. Like to me, the purpose of a debate is to figure out which idea has more merit and to go into that idea with, if there are resources to be dispersed to the, the ideas with the most merit, get the most resources. But then the purpose of a conference as well is to also identify other avenues of research that might not be being discovered or explored or talked about that only get recognized when you get a group of people with a bunch of different specialties together communicating about those things. And then all of a sudden, these, these ideas mesh together. You come up with different concepts and different things that require resources um, to kind of look into. So and uh, it goes back to the conversation I was having, uh, Joe, you and I was having with a, um, a, a economics PhD uh, that we know, a doctorate in, in uh, economics, mm -hmm. who was talking about how the black economic, the black economics group was struggling with funding. And we know, you know, that the, the lot of the black psychological organizations are also struggling with funding and in their struggles with funding, they're trying to become more like the uh their white counterparts because their white counterparts are flowing with funding right um and so you know you run into that space where black people love talking about the soft sciences because they're they're knowledgeable they're the sexy sciences you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying yes i said social slash soft sciences black people love talking about them though uh because they're sexy but those are the sciences that are difficult to create change with because you can't do it by yourself. If you become a great architect or engineer, you can build a lot of things by yourself. And even if you can't physically build it, you can design the prototypes. You know what I'm saying? You can create something tangible that you can show people. With the soft sciences or the social sciences, I got a theory that I think might work, but in order for me to test it, I need about 100 people. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's one of the problems we run into with uh black psychology, our sociology, our anthropology, and even with that, the accepting of the fact that a black social a black psychology organization without those other social sciences is kind of pointless. Like yeah. if 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 a black psychologist is doing all this studying on the black side on black psychology, but doesn't have a black sociologist to bounce those ideas off of in a in a in a macro sense, and to kind of try to play on human behaviors that way, and then they don't have a black economist to start talking about how mm. resources interact with all of that, and then they don't have a black anthropologist to kind of talk about um the the history of these societies and how people moved in space and all these other things then all of these things are kind of kind of pointless by themselves unless you just want knowledge for knowledge sake that's kind of why i was saying earlier we need to get out of kind of the generalist phase of looking at black history and black culture and black society and start getting into the right. specialist phase uh and then the specialism the stratification of these phases needs to be even more focused than just the social sciences like we need okay so you're a, you're a psychologist all right we need you looking at black psych why do black people behave the way they behave as far as a, a, a diaspora situation okay now you over here you're focused specifically on black people in america specifically that's it that's your focus all right <laughs> You over here, you're focused on uh pre-colonial blah blah blah. You for and then they all so when I, I look at it, I say it was it's a brilliant. I love the way that black psychology started. Like I love the way yes. that they articulated the purpose and the goals in the clip that you just showed. 
But like you guys also said, we dropped the ball. It's, in it terms devolved. Of continuing that. Right. So, so you t so so for a couple of things. First of all, black psychology should give perspective in all nine areas of human activity, mm -hmm. and black psychology should link should be one of the links be between all areas of nine all, all nine areas of human activity because there's a psychology behind all of that, and psychology goes with all of that. It goes with it. But also, like you was talking about being a specialist, I remember um, Dr. Rashidi, he was, it was a video I was watching of his. And he was talking about when he first got started in um, learning black history and even going on the lecture circuit and teaching black history. Um, I, I don't remember the gentleman's uh, who he mentioned in the story, but he was talking about, like you just talking about Pat having a focus. He was talking about how in this setting in the who, the master teacher the elder that he was learning from was basically explaining to them like you were just saying why being a generalist don't necessarily help and don't necessarily work why people need to specify certain things so he was saying that's why he specifically chose to look at the african presence throughout the world so what's the african presence in asia what's the african presence in in the in um in australia and the south pacific so you know and then i thought thought about you know what i did i i i specifically look at the stories of the individuals of the throughout the african diaspora. so i'm telling people stories right kind of like jay roger did like find the information tell people stories so being able to specialize in certain things and when you specialize in certain things everybody has to work together because everybody is a cog in the wheel once again pieces to the puzzle of why we need to work together why racism is a team sport but also well think about where we are now the a lot of the scholars or the speakers or the educators or some of the people that we look that a lot of black people look up to now now today that are popular are straight generalist some of these people you have no idea what they do or no idea what their exact focus is but they speak in such general terms but they're such great speakers and they they articulate so well and they just say they say enough the right way where people give them the grace and people give them the praise oh this person know what they're talking about this person know what they're talking about but we're still not seeing any real progress coming from this because it's too generalized there's no specificity in it like you know we talked we've we've had conversations on this phone like some of these folk i don't care you black white whatever some of these folk look man there's no way there's no way you could tell me you spent you have a you have a master's and a, and a phd in these fields here but yet you're supposed to be a a a um a trusted uh, authority in all these seven other fields and stuff that we know you ain't studied, but you just, you got general knowledge of it. Like, no, that's not how it works. Like, I know black history and I know black psychology. Those are the studies. Those are the things that I've been studying since I was 18 years old. Those are my, those are the things that I know I know. Everything else? No, I'm not. But I know I know, I know black history. And I know black psychology. I, I'm not saying I know everything, but I know these things because I've been studying these things. I'm continuing to study these things. So that you that's what I thought about when you was talking about um having a focus. There are too many, too many of us that don't have a focus, and there's too many of us that are, ge are general generalists, but also lost in that is the cooperation. Lost in that is the is the willingness to get everybody on board because even in like the conscious community like once again we got all this information but we can't use this information to get no resources well that's why i only I, I struggle with calling these i struggle with saying conscious community anymore i don't even use that term because i think we really you know i, I think <laughs> we're doing the word conscious a disservice <laughs> um, because if people were really conscious about what we're dealing with and going through, then they would be more proactive in moving in the ways to fix and remedy what was wrong mm -hmm. rather than consistently debate or go back and forth um, or gibberish and nonsense just because they want to be right. They feel the need to be right. You know, uh, we will be working towards solutions and not, you know, uh, as Patrick's saying, you know, um, masturbation of our, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> intellectualism or whatever the hell they call it. 
Um, I think that um, I think a lot of people are really just scared because if you move to being autonomous and you move towards liberating yourself, there's a responsibility, a huge responsibility that comes with that. And a lot of people are afraid of being responsible for their own outcomes. And as a community, we have a scapegoat sort of mindset. This is why people won't do stuff, but they'll tell you you need to go vote. Why? Because when shit fails, we can blame the politician. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, that's our most powerful tool right now, voting. <laughs> yeah, you can see how that's working for us. So, you know, we have, um, I think we need to start understanding the because right now we're dealing with the psychology of our people. And it's funny because I think one of the most relevant terms in regards to the psychology of our people was dealt to us by somebody who's considered a sociopath um, who's been in jail since the 80s. You know what I'm saying? Um, what's the guy from Helter Skelter? Um, uh, I forget his name. Um, but oh, it'll come to me in a second. But, you know, he said that, you know, in studying black people, they understand that black people have, you know, um, a real spiritual bond with the universe. And because of that, that black people are three times more likely to be manipulated by fear. Right. So um, because of that, fear is what's been used to keep us locked in place. And you look at black people right now, a person will fight you to mask their fear. You know what I'm saying? And that's what we have when it comes to being autonomous. Because we fear retribution of white supremacy, of white people. I'm not even going to call it white supremacy anymore. We fear retribution of white people. We fear how they look at us. We fear how they'll receive us. We'll fear whether or not we'll be accepted in their spaces anymore. And we fear their violence because we know their propensity for violence is magnified to ours. You know, we might talk that shit, but they walk that shit. And yeah. you know what I'm saying? Our fear and learn and, and moving in any of these directions is what keeps us frozen in this place right here. And that's why we rather function in the subconscious, you know what I'm saying, than actually being conscious of our situation. Because our subconscious controls us. If you're conscious of what's going on, you'll change and fix it. But we haven't got to that place. As um Dr. Amos Wilson said, as a people, you can progress and you can regress. And we're seeing decades of regression for black people. Well, yeah, Pat, you mentioned earlier about the debates that were happening, especially in the 2000s, 2010s, because it was a, a hot debate circuits and stuff that was going on in this conscious community. But you made an interesting point being able to debate topics to figure out which topic would be the best topic to, to go forward with and take action on that topic or take action on that idea to actually do something with it. And um, another another proponent that they talked about of black psychology is having an understanding in the worldview uh, uh, or having an understanding of who you are in the world and what your worldview is, what your what is your philosophy of the world? How do you see the world? How do you receive the world? How do you live in the world? How do you react to the world? How do you prepare in the world? Like what is our overall worldview as black people? And our worldview is still steeped in the lens of a white person, of white America, of, of European thought, of European eyes, of European cultural uh, cues, of European dress. Like we're, we still have the white eyes in our head. We still have that. A lot of us got calcified from the lobe. If you see the video I dropped on Tuesday, they had a whole calcified from the lobe. But, um, but we're still viewing the world with white eyes. But that that's what happens when we don't use the information, when we're just talking about the information. Once again, it's the quality of your life and the quality of your community, of the, especially the people that you are communing with that are conscious or the people that you're supposed to be building with. Are you all getting better or are you all getting worse? Is your situation improving? Is your life improving? Is your community improving? Are your children improving? Are your are the elders improving? Are, are the adults improving? Because if that's not happening, then you got to reevaluate 
yourself and reevaluate while you learning this information to just feel good about being a black person. Hey, hey, fuck all of our feelings. Let's just go ahead and get that out of the way. Fuck all of our feelings. This is not about feelings. It's about really achieving a goal. And right now, our goals seem very unrealistic because there's no true plan of action, an overall collective plan of action, or even a small collective plan of actions. There are some factions that have plan that have goals, have plan of actions, but once again, we're all working in silos, though. We're working in silos. And to be honest, I don't even blame. Well, I do blame. I under, I say this. I understand why they're working in silos. They're working in silos because we can't get along. Like we, 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 you talk about the beef that you know W E B the boys, uh, Booker T Washington, all these people. Think about think about how long we can go back and document, especially black scholars going back and forth at each other. We, we work in silos because we saw our ancestors work in silos. And if everybody want to be famous and everybody want to be on top, then you're going to end up dispersing yourself into silos. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. We, we, we have a culture. And here's the thing. We've lost community. We haven't been a community since the 80s. Where we are right now, there's a populace of people who have to live in the same neighborhoods. And we don't have any control over those neighborhoods. Or communities. Or the and children. therefore, we don't control the politics that run them. And we don't control the culture. Our culture is dictated to us. And because all those things are happening, you know, and we sort of taking our hands off the steering wheel and allow for others to come in and, and you know, take the wheel. We are in that particular, we're in a very particular place right now that is dangerous. I don't think people really know how close we are to cultural annihilation. I don't think we really understand how close we are to, I mean, think about it for a second. Politic, politics wise, people aren't really talking about needing the, needing the black vote. People aren't really talking about black issues, seriously, on a national scale anyway. Because now black people have faded into, you know, this, this place of... Um, purgatory where we you know we don't exist you know in terms of the national landscape the political landscape and once you can make somebody disappear from there it's only a little bit you know it's only a matter of time before you can make yeah. them disappear in other places like seriously when the last time y'all saw a real live native american hmm. <laughs> No, that's a good that's a good that's a good question. You know, we don't even talk about Native American issues except when you want to go to the casino. Well, you know, I, I tell people I, I remind black people all the time that Native Americans are the only group of people black people are doing better than. And that's not saying a lot because they've practically been wiped out. Yeah. And that's the only group of other group of people in America that we're doing better than as a collective. Hmm. Like you talked about, <laughs> so they also talked about cultural a, a cultural war. The last guy was talking about a cultural war. Well, we that's been won by them. Um, the cultural war. Um, because remember, we the culture we practice is our version of white American culture. We mm -hmm. put our own spin on the cultural practices that we picked up from people around us, and we just we just put a black spin on. But the and redefining ourselves, like we always talked about, we got to redefine the culture, but we got to redefine the minds of the people within this culture to be able to redefine everything. The 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 soil need to be turned, like the old folks say, when the guard when the when the land go bad and you want you need to grow food and the land go bad, the soil need to be turned. Mm -hmm. And if we don't turn the soil, we ain't talking about nothing. Pat, you you been quiet. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, I don't have nothing to uh, add. Y'all been okay. Y'all been rocking, and I went on a pretty long rant before I got quiet. So, <laughs> okay. well, I just, I just want to make sure you, you want to, if you want to add, because, because at this point, I don't think we need to continue to beat a dead horse. 
I think we pretty much got our point across. Um, black psychology is I I really believe black psychology is important, but what's gonna make it powerful is how we use, 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 use the information. Thought you were gonna say use each other. <laughs> we already do that. I know we, we already do, do that. We scam all, all the scamming we do for each other on each other. Come on. I, all I, the wrong I mean, reasons. I was about to say something, but never mind. We all the scamming, we all the scamming black folk doing each other. Oh, we we using each other. That's how we know the psychology. That's how we know we ain't using the information. That's how we know we ain't using the black psychology. But also think about how many I tell people all the time, and I'm close out on this. I tell people all the time. I went to Florida A and M University, Florida Agriculture Mechanical University, the highest of Seven Hills. Right, I went there. I went with a pretty large group of friends. Like all of us, we from Tallahassee, we stayed in Tallahassee, we went to family. And I'm one of the few, if not the only one, who came out with knowledge of black psychology and being able to understand, you know, a uh, black Afrocentric worldview or black African mind or black psychological <laughs> lens or anything. Because I I um graduated from the psychology program. And like I said, when I was a uh, before I got into the psychology program, when I was a, a freshman, I saw in the curriculum the second semester, I saw that there was a black psychology class, and I was like, "Ooh, I want to take that." Now, but it was I was being legit, just like, "Ooh, this sound cool." I wasn't. I didn't take the class because I was like, "Yeah, I'm finna pro black, finna go change my mind, and finna go be down." No, I was like, "Ooh, black psychology. It sound cool because." Most of psychology I knew was white people. But then when I got into the class and started listening to Dr. Cambone and started reading the information, I was like, oh, shit. Stuff in the change. My mind, my light. I think my switch was already on, but my switch started to shine a little brighter that day. But You, you got hit with the young M.A., huh? <laughs> but I'm, see, I'm going to have to cut that out. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> but but not I can't say I, I I have fell victim to not using the information, but that's why we're changing it now. So I can I can say for the last 10, 13 years we've been using this information. So forget Pat. I'm gonna have to fight. We got to fight now, Pat. You hit me with the young mate. We got to fight. <laughs> you don't want to talk about ooh. No, no, no. <laughs> not like that. Ooh, just a, see, ooh existed before she did. Okay, stop that. No, she invented <laughs> ooh. One no ooze before young MA. <laughs> hey, whatever. All right, whatever. <laughs> hey man, breakdown Friday. This is how we do www.ontheshoulders1.com. Remember fetlightstation.com. Check it out. Joseph Ward, Patrick Irvin, Professor Carl Tone Jones. Fet Life, Fet Life Station tonight, 7 p.m. Fetlifestation.com. Make sure you check it out. 7 p.m. Make it do what it do. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Show some love. Let's keep this thing going. See y'all next time. Check out the next video. Love y'all.